Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 15 for our Ninja Platformer tutorial series. In this video, we're going to add some hit particles for when the player damages the enemies. So right now we have a shake effect and we have a white flash when we're hitting these enemies, but it still doesn't look that great. Let's add some particles to it. We're gonna do this using a particle node. First things though, I just wanna say uh, thank you to all those who have been purchasing my new Action RPG course. I appreciate that. Um, it is on sale right now. If you're interested, there will be a link in the description. The students who purchase my courses make these free videos here on YouTube possible. Let's go to our scripts over here, and we're going to create a new script. And this script is going to export, or not export, it's going to extend or inherit from our particle, our GPU particles 2D. So we're gonna call this particle burst. Actually, I want that to be snake case. Particle burst. Stay consistent and it will inherit from GPU particle 2D. Go, create that. We'll open it up. Give it a class name called Particle Burst. Did I spell that right? Particle. I think I did. Okay. And it's just going to have a ready function. And in here, so here's what I like to do. Inside of this ready function, we're going to, we're, we're overriding the built-in particle node. Okay, this is the built-in particle node. We're adding a little bit of extra functionality to it. I like to have this class, this custom node, custom particle node, as a way to easily create particles that burst and then immediately go away. And so we're gonna add some logic to the ready function to allow our particle to do that. But, we can still edit this particle very easily in the editor over and over and over without it, without having to turn on one shot. Um, and it makes it, to me, it just makes it easier to create vertical, sorry, burst like particles. Vertical, that's a new one. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna come into this ready function and we're gonna say finished.connect q free. So the finish signal, can I type today, please? The finish signal on GPU particles gets emitted whenever the particle ends. Whenever, if you have one shot on and it finishes, emitting gets set to false, then finished gets emitted. And we also want emitting to by default be true. We want explosiveness to by default be set to one. We want one shot to be set to true. And these are all properties of particles and we're turning on the ones that would be useful or that would be necessary for a burst type effect. So we're just having them by default be on on this particle. And then we want local coordinates also to be true. Now there's one last thing that we have to do. We have to call the restart function. Now, what, why do we have to do this? Let's click on this here. Um, hold control and click on it. Restarts the particle emission cycle, clearing existing particles to avoid particles vanishing from the viewport. Wait for the finish signal before calling. So restart needs to be called in order for our in order for our finished signal to correctly um, be emitted. Because when we set all of this stuff right here, setting true, uh, we need to actually get this set up. Otherwise, finished won't actually be emitted. I don't actually understand the workings under the hood for why this is the case, but this is the case. We have to call restart here. Otherwise, the particles will not be read on finished because finished will never actually be emitted. Now that we've got our new custom node, we can create a particle with it. 
And we can do this by coming up to create a new scene, adding an other node, and doing particle burst. And that just creates a, a, a node using our custom node that we just made. So it's going to have this script attached to it. Click on 2D. Come over here on the right. And this is where we're going to manipulate the different values of this. So first, we're going to set the amount to 3. Come over here so we can zoom in on our particle a little bit. We're going to set the texture to hit particle. It took me a second to find it. And we're going to set the lifetime under time to 0.3. And yes, we want it to interpolate. That all looks good. Now we need to set the process material. And the process material is going to define how this particle moves inside of space. You can see it's already starting to do some stuff. So first, the flags. We want it to align Y. That just means that the particle will be pointing in the direction that it's going. Next, we want to affect its spawn. And we're going to start off with the position. We need some emission shape. Right now it's a point. Let's make it a sphere and give the sphere a radius of 8. So that gives it a little bit more of a... I don't know if you can see this kind of slicing effect going on in the video recording, but it's very interesting for me. That's going to affect the position that it's spawned at. Now we want to affect the velocity, and we're going to set the spread to 180. That means it will just uh, be going in a lot of different directions. The initial velocity will have a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 200. You can see our particle is already starting to go off in random directions. We do have a gravity though. We're going to remove that, so come into accelerations and gravity. And under our gravity, we're going to set it to. Oh, we are in a we're in a platform game, so we actually do want to leave the gravity on. Let's go into display, and we're going to mess with the scale here. So we're going to create a new scale curve. That way, we can use this to affect how our particle is scaled. We'll set the starting value here to about just a little over five, and then the ending value back down. Well, we don't want it to be zero exactly, but we'll make it very small. You see it's going to start off bigger and scale down quite small. And that's really all we need. We've set up everything we need for this. We can save it. And we're going to save it. Well, let's actually give it a name over here first. We'll call it Sparks Particle Burst Effect. Spark. I really can't type today. We're going to blame it on me having a slight cold. I know that's not a very good excuse. <laughs> but that's what we're going to blame it on. And we'll come into our enemy cannon, and we need to be able to instantiate this effect whenever the cannon takes damage. It, bar SH, I just forgot about that there from the last video. Luckily, it doesn't matter. And inside of our enemy cannon, we need to get access to our particle. So we're going to come up here and we're going to say const spark. Particle burst effect equals preload particle burst effect dot tscn. We've got access to that scene now. We can easily create it whenever we take damage. We'll create one right here. We'll say our spark particle equals spark particle burst effect dot instantiate 
get tree dot current scene dot add child spark particle. So this just gets current scene, it gets world essentially, the world node that we run every time we play the game. Get tree dot current scene. Current scene is going to be world because that's the root node of the scene that we're running. And we're going to add this spark particle as a child. Why can't we add it to our enemy cannon? Well, if the enemy cannon is destroyed, all of its children will also be destroyed. And so our particle will not show. That's why we want to add it to the world. But because of that, we also need to set its position. So spark particle dot global position equals. Uh, and now is where we want to get maybe just a little bit. Um, no, we can just do global position. Let's look at our cannon here. Our cannon, see the cannon's position is down here at the base. If we set it to the cannon's global position, it's going to be creating the effect from down here. Ideally, we want it from the middle of our sprite here. So we'll use the sprite global position instead. Sprite 2D dot global position. Now, whenever our cannon takes damage, we'll see a little bit of particles. It's amazing how much that actually helps the feel of hitting those cannons. The last thing we're going to do is the hit effect, but we will do that in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, be sure and like it. Comment down below if you have any questions. Hit the bell and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I will see you all in the next one.